a beautiful incident happened when Shiva and Parvati were to get married. All the gods and divine beings, all the asuras, demons, demented beings, everybody came. So, they asked, please tell us your antecedents. Shiva just looked down and sat quietly. Then they asked, what is this nonsense? Because without knowing the antecedents of the man, you can't give the girl to him. Narada, who was there, just took up his veena, it's a stringed instrument, and just went on playing the same note. A beautiful incident happened when Shiva and Parvati were to get married, a huge celebration was set forth. All the gods and divine beings, all the asuras, demons, demented beings, everybody came. Normally, in most weddings or in all weddings, if these people come, they won't come. If they come, these won't come. But in Shiva's wedding, Everybody was there because he was Pashupati, the lord of the animals. All the animals came. A huge wedding, all human beings, gods, demons, demented beings, goblins, devils, ghosts, animals, creatures, worms, insects, all of them came, a big celebration. So, a proper marriage ceremony was going on. When they are to give the girl, to the groom, they will ask you about your antecedents, your breeding, your parentage, your family tree, your gotra and your nakshatra, you know, your star and your… this thing. So, they asked, please tell us your antecedents. Shiva just looked down and sat quietly. Narada, who was there, just took up his veena, it's a stringed instrument, and just went on playing the same note, down, down, down. Repeatedly they were asking, they're in a hurry because they have an auspicious time when they have to finish the wedding. But they are asking for his antecedents, this man is just sitting quietly, that man is just doing, plucking the string. Then they asked, what is this nonsense? Because without knowing the antecedents of the man, you can't give the girl to him. <clears throat> why are you sitting quiet and why are you going on plucking the string? Then Narada said, he is Swayambhu, he has no parentage. Because whole creation is rooted in the sound and because out of his mastery over all sounds, that means out of his mastery over creation, he has created himself. So sound is his parentage, that's why I'm plucking the string. Shiva is known as Swayambhu. Swayambhu means uh, self-created. He is self-created. No father, no mother, a self-created being. Why this dimension is expressed this way is he is the Adi Yogi. first yogi. If you are the first yogi, once again self-created. Now, when we refer to him as a yogi, when we refer to anybody as a yogi, actually in one way we are saying he is self-created. 
is not available to the forces of normal destiny. He is not available to the forces of karma. He is not available to the normal processes of life. His life is self-created. Anybody who manages to educate himself a little bit by himself or manages to make a little money by himself, usually they claim that they are self-made men. Usually people who claim to be self-made men are the most egoistic of the lot. When they claim that they are self-made men, in many ways it absolves the God Almighty of a terrible responsibility. Now it's not in that context we're talking, we're talking about a very basic life as a process, not life as living, life as a basic process. On that level, he's self-created, he's a swayambhu. Fundamentally, the basic aspect of yoga is just that, to get into a process of self-creation where the nature of your body, the nature of your energy, the nature of your emotion, the nature of your mind, everything is created by you. <laughs>